In 2013, my last year as a pro road racer, I'm trying to imagine if I had rocked up to my team camp and I'd said to the management or the riders or even the mechanics, hey, what do you guys think about tubeless tires? They would have hauled off one by one and slapped me in the face. Say, get out of here with your tubeless tires, Jeremy. But fast forward to 2020, jokes are off because literally the biggest riders in the world, they're running them at Perry roubaix in the big three-week Grand Tours, and the time trialists literally love them because of how fast they are in the tunnel and out on the road. So we had our friends at Pirelli send us out some of their all-new tubeless tires to test out, show you guys how to set them up, and put them through the paces. Okay, so now we're gonna mount up this tubeless pair of tires. We're gonna be using the Pirelli Cinturado tires. These are an all-terrain tire, size 32. I've been running them off-road on tons of gravel, doing a little bit of uh, probably overusing them on the off-road sectors, and they've held up quite well. But let's talk about mounting up tubeless tires. So the first thing that I always like to do when I'm looking at tubeless tires is make sure that my valve core, this, this independent piece that sits in the rim, is super tight. You wanna make sure you have some high-quality ones, it has a nice rubber grommet here to make sure that the seal inside the rim is super pro. Next up, I like to make sure that I match the logo of the tire, this one being Pirelli, right here at the valve core. That way I always have somewhere to mark it, okay? Now, I also have so many times messed up and put the tire on backwards, especially on the front disc. Cannot tell you if you're gluing up a tubular how brutal it is to mount a tubular up backwards. But with tubeless, the worst that you'd have to do is take it off and flip it around. So simply gonna put this on just like you would any tire. Then we're gonna take a little couple gulps of your favorite sealant. There's a lot of different sealants out in the market. Glump, glump. Now some of the sealants have glitter in them to patch up the bigger holes. We've learned that from mountain biking. The glitter kind of acts as a, as a way to make it so that it doesn't blow out and that it holds the latex a little bit better when the air hits it, it all reacts. Just like a perfect cake baking. But today I'm just using regular latex and I usually just kind of set this up here like this and then I just close up the bottom where I poured the latex sealant in. Go around real simple. Like I said, my logo there is at the top and then, you know, I'm able to just snap this on without a whole lot of problem. Real quick, for simplicity's sake, I grabbed my compressor so that I could just pop these right on. However, if you guys use a regular pump, should not be a problem. A lot of tires, a lot of uh, manufacturers of big pumps have big bore options where you can push a big amount of air all at the same time to be able to really get these tires to seat quickly. Now, if they're not going on like this, you always wanna take a look and just see where that might be happening. So as you can see, hopefully here, I didn't have the tire all the way over, so it was a little bit set on the opposite side. You can also do a trick where you take the valve core out of these and then you can blow a lot of air into them even faster to really get them to seat up well. I think that that's gonna do it though. Let's take a look. Let's make sure that that's over the sides. And it is. Give it one more shot. Here we go. Now when you hear that noise, that means absolute perfection. That means that the tire is seating well on the rim. That's like music to your ears when you're in the business of doing tubeless setup on your tires. So don't be afraid if you hear that, that's completely normal. The next thing that you wanna make sure once you've done that, you wanna bring them up, these tires today, I'm gonna to put up to about 80 PSI. May hear a couple more tings. There we go. So we're up to 80. Then we wanna kinda of just shake it around and make sure that the sealant's going all over the tire, getting the inside coated. Then we're gonna get these tires out there and we're gonna put them through the paces. Super simple setup, no problem at all. Let's see what they can do. All right, so I don't wanna sound like some type of tubeless expert, but when we go through the different systems that exist, right? Clinchers, tubulars, and then tubeless, I would have to say that tubeless sits right in the middle of both of those. Now, tubulars being so uh, drenched in European cycling history, and the clincher being really, I would say, the simplest version of how to get a tire on and off with a tube inside of it, but tubeless with the rim manufacturers and the tire manufacturers and the sealant producers, all trading information and coming together over the years, I have to say that in my opinion, tubeless tires are something that you absolutely should consider. And we're gonna dig into all of it and what goes down and how they do right now. Now, I've chosen four different road debris to choose from. We've got industrial, heavy duty staples that we're gonna lay out strategically and run over. Then we've got three to four millimeter deep thumbtacks 
which we're also gonna lay out strategically. Then we've got those longer, thicker push tacks, which ooh, just putting those in your tires hurts, hurts my feelings. And then last up, we've got some really serious galvanized steel, thick 35 millimeter deep nails that we're gonna be testing out. So let's see how this goes. Well, this guy is really in there. So these industrial staples that we put down are no match for this tubeless setup here. Basically, these tires ate these up and spit them out and asked me, what else do you have? And I, in fact, have a lot more. I've got thumbtacks coming next to you, tire setup. It's sealed. Oh, man. Brutal direct hit. Okay, let's give this a spin. It's looking good. If it stops bubbling, I call it sealed. No bubbles. Oh man, we got a direct hit. This guy right here went straight in there like a missile torpedo, just And like I said, I've got these babies at about 75 PSI right now. Let's see, actually, Put our glasses on, just, just in case. And this thing. Gee. Son of a... Blimey! Great Jiminy Crickets! It sounds like it's sealing. <laughs> Is it possible? Will it seal? I'm shaking it. I'm giving it everything. And it has sealed. It absolutely has sealed. Speechless. <laughs> that, I'm gonna have to find that nail. I wanna drive over it. <laughs> All right, so some final thoughts on tubeless tires. For me, I love tubeless, but sometimes in certain scenarios, like when I'm on the road for GCN and I'm in California and I'm doing a huge gravel ride, and I'm doing a big road ride, I'm in the hotel room and I'm switching tires out. I don't have time for sealant and big pumps and all that jazz. That's, that's a headache that I'm not really willing to take on. So if you travel a lot, definitely something to consider. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about was tire pressure. When you're running tubeless tires like this, you wanna make sure that your tire pressure is not up in the hundreds of PSI. I like to keep it around 75 PSA, maybe five bar, and that's because like with clinchers, you can pinch flat, so you wanna keep the pressure super high. And with tubulars, well, it's just a completely different beast. But with tubeless tires, you can run a lot lower pressure, you get more suppleness, that's the beauty of it. There's no tube inside to pinch or to hit anything on, so you really do get a lot of extra wiggle room. And with that lower pressure, you get that increased ride quality and just overall a better feeling on the bike. So in conclusion, if you were to do uh, heinous things to these tires, these beautiful brand new Pirelli tires like we did here today, which I wouldn't recommend. But if you were to do those things out on the open road, you were to hit a couple tack strips, get a rusty nail, end up having to take the beaten dirt path home, I personally would bet on tubeless tires. They're a great solution. And as you can tell today, they really did hold up under the tests that we threw at them. So I'd love to know what your guys' setup is. I'd love to know what you think of tubeless tires. If you're running them, if you're not, why? Well, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.